Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it says your name under there so they know that you're Lori Thompson. Hi Lori. Hello. Hi darling, how you doing? Hiya. <laughs> what's, what's, what's new? What's that? Well, you know, I'm inspired by our get-togethers, and uh, we were talking last time about a child experience that is unique, and the daughter of Tristan Terramino, if the name sounds familiar, you had a wide video. But he was collection. only a porno director. He was only a right. porno director. Right. I mentioned he Thora Birch, who was the daughter of Jack Birch and Carol Connors from Deep Throat. I know, man, oh man, talk about a resume. And her mother had sex in that film. Yeah. Did she really? Oh yeah. Wow, well oh, this, yeah. this is about this chi the child of Tristan Terramino, as we were talking, a, a porn director, and it's called The Part of the Heart That Can't Be Eaten. That's the name of the title, which it's is kind title. of interesting. It's kind of an interesting <laughs> title. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's, the, that's and I will, it's, you know, It also on might my be a great name for a porn film. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know. Don't you? Some days I just sit around and think of good album titles, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it would, um, yeah, that would. That like would my be favorite. Uh, who was it came up with? I think it was my friend Michael O'Donoghue years ago, um, one of the early writers on Saturday Night Live, and he died years ago. One of the, one of my good close friends who died and earlier in my life, you know. Yeah, there were some of those people, but he. Uh, he came up with a title for a porn film, a gay porn film. Sailor Dick takes a stern approach. <laughs> that would be good. That would be good. Yeah. And uh, when Michael O'Donoghue, I remember he came to prominence because I was following that crowd when they were doing Lemmings and things like that. Belushi was in it, and Michael yeah. O'Donoghue was mm -hmm. he was instrumental in the National Lampoon too. Yes. And right. his big bit was Steel Needles. Hot steel needles yeah. poked deep in their eyes. Well, no, he said, "Here's my impression of a person having steel needles <laughs> pierced in his eyes." Was, ah! <laughs> but he was just so dark. I first and, met Michael in Chicago when I was working in Chicago, and I had him on as a, I, I think I had him on as a guest. Yeah. Yeah. And or. Um, I, was it Chicago or was it Minnesota? I can't remember. But anyway, one of those two places. So when I moved to New York and I started doing a talk show on Saturday nights where I had guests. That would be. I wanted two guests. The first guest I wanted was Paul Krasner. From the, Realist. the Realist. And I wanted Michael O'Donoghue. And they both came on. They were my first two guests. And I became that very close to, to Michael because yeah. I, you know. He, he yeah. really enjoyed his company and, and his friendship. He was the yeah, one that got me in the uh, National Lampoon Radio Dinner album. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. that, that it's, yeah, because he sounds, he's depicted as kind of a, a cantankerous guy or uh, tempestuous. And I don't know how to I, describe him. I, I you know, <laughs> I, I, I guess I knew him on a whole different level, you know. Where yeah, we, with we, your would, we would go out to dinner and we'd just converse him so he didn't have to be on. You know, yeah. be, be Michael O'Donoghue, the character that is Michael O'Donoghue. Yeah, because yeah, he said something funny but dark about Doug Kenny, who was so instrumental in the Lamb Kenny was, yeah. uh, was brilliant. Absolutely and very, brilliant. And, and somewhat trouble and very cocaine. I, I did a show with them, the National Lampoon, and they came on. And what it was is they were playing different characters, and Kenny was one of them. And um, the premise of it was 
Let me see if I can get if I can remember this completely. <laughs> yeah, even their premises were far out. The premise you know? was that there was a place where you could send your child to be reprogrammed because he was Whoa. bad or doing stuff that was bad or whatever. Yeah. And um, we we did this show where we were in interviewing people who either had been in this particular camp or yeah. uh, ran it. And the premise of it, but here was what was so brilliant because they said, now we're gonna do this thing, but here's how we do it. We do it from the premise that we're not questioning whether these things exist or not, but whether they're being run well. <laughs> See, what you do, if, you, if you're gonna do a, a, a hoax, you remove the hoax about one step from the hoax itself and talk yes. about another aspect of the hoax and therefore everybody believes the hoax. Yes, and see that that's the same with satire. You have to, it, satire that sounds so yeah. close. During that hour, the, we actually had one kid phone up and turn his brother in. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked him, mom likes him best. And O'Donnie who was on that, he played, I think, one of the people running, the, or the, maybe the person doing the article or whatever. And I think Chris Cerf was there, uh, it was Bennett Cerf's son. Yes. And T D Doug Kenny was on it, and uh, I don't know if Henry oh, Hendra, Beard was Tony Hendra there because Tony you know, Hendra, you know, Tony Hendra is the only guy in the world that I almost got into a bar fight with. Oh, really? Well, and that's unusual because you don't hang out in bars, and that you are, a, you know, taking a pugilist. You know, well, he throat. had something ag against me, and I didn't like him very much either. And we were at this bar together, and I think we exchanged words. I'm, I'm trying to remember the conver conversation now, and one word came to another, and then we were about ready to strike blows at each other, and people stopped us. Yeah, good yeah. thing. Tony Henry, now, not one of the more pleasant people in the world. Which he'd probably tell you, you know? I mean, he. I think he's fed on that, the iconoplastic Tony Hendra. Yeah. But he worked, there was a magazine called New Times, and it lasted not long at all, when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And my dad was great about, we could subscribe to any publication, no matter how leftist, no matter how wild, no matter how anything, as long as we were reading. And so I subscribed to some radical, but might have been the Berkeley Barb or something, and here I am in rural Illinois. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was, it was, it was replaced by this new magazine called New Times. And Tony Hendro wrote a lot for it. So that yeah. was my exposure to him. And then I found out he'd done all this stuff with Lampoon. Yeah. And all the... He was also, a, he was also a comic. Uh, he um, he was a, had a comic team, and I can't remember the other guy's name now. But, you know, uh, <laughs> he, he, he was a very... You know, he had been a stand-up comic for quite a bit. A sketch comic, actually. Yeah, and when you, um, boy, that rule, six degrees of separation, especially applies to the comedy world. Um, and that comedy, that Saturday Night Live, Second City, um, Groundlings. Um, well, what happened was they stole, for Saturday Night Live, Lauren stole a lot of people away from the National yeah. Lampoon. And Second City, yeah. And sec well, I no, Second City, uh, the, ca the Canadian Second City. Yes, especially yes. Especially because Lauren's Canadian. You know. Yeah, and that's what I realized. I was like, oh, this all the more. So, if you, you want to talk about the genesis of, of, of that kind of comedy, it wasn't really Saturday Night Live, but all the people they stole from elsewhere. Uh, another, yes. group, another group they got people from over the years was the Groundlings in LA. Yes, out in LA, yeah. That's, and so, and that's become kind of what Second City, like the, when you think of breeding grounds for people. Well, Pee Wee Herman started there. That started as a project. At the Groundlings. The Groundlings? Pee -wee, Pee Wee Herman, yeah. And, and at Pee Wee's Playhouse. And they did yeah. a thing called Pee Wee's Playhouse. And eventually, you know, he became big. Well, and yeah. so many people have been through there. Uh, Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Uh, Julia Sweeney, who has a great one on the show. I love Julia <laughs> Sweeney. I got, to, I got to know her here in New York through Penn and, Penn and Teller. Uh-huh. She is, a, at least in those days, was adorable. 
Just adorable. Oh, keen intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Keen just uh, and okay. very insightful. Name a movie she was in. Okay. Ah, I hate being stumped. Uh, but I'm going to. What movie? Pulp Fiction. She played um, the one that was married to the guy who ran the junkyard where yeah. mm -hmm. the uh, the fixer who was played by, was it Harvey Cattell or Joe Pesci? Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's where they took the something. Yeah. And she was the wife or the spousal right. unit. Very quick time. part, but she was in it. Yeah. And I went, yeah, oh, and Julia. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was wondering, I think she does a lot of projects um, where she knows people. You know, because they're, I mean, she reminds me of the spirit, uh, the way comedy used to be, the way it must have been, where they really help each other out on, on projects, and there's so well, much. Well, if you, if you went in the time that I was doing the radio show in San Francisco, you had a very good comedy community where people did help each other. You know, yeah, somebody that, would come in and start to be a comic and they didn't know where to go and how to do things. And they were all the other comics would help them. Yes. You know, they slept on each other's floors. They did, you know, uh, everything to to aid and abet. There was they a comedian called The Amazing Jonathan, which I think most people have seen. OK, I remember. Did he uh, have and, a guitar? And Jonathan. Or? Yeah. But in the early days, Jonathan, all he owned was this big, huge, I guess, van. And he slept in it. And so he'd come to San Francisco for the comedy competition. He'd park the van and sleep in it. Mm -hmm. And another person who came to the San Francisco comedy competition uh, from uh, Salt Lake, a city, uh, who didn't have a place to stay at the time, was Roseanne Barr. Oh, yeah. And so, and so he let her sleep in the van. It was like a free Airbnb. Yeah, right, Wait exactly. For. And then another friend of mine who took uh, became friends with her, then introduced me to her, to, to Roseanne, and uh, we uh, she put her up in her place uh, during the comedy competition. And every morning, this was when we were at the, uh, at the Quake, Roseanne would come in and sit down where our audience was and uh, then after the show, we'd go out and take her out to breakfast so she'd have something to eat. Uh -huh. You know, it was that rough for her. And, um, but I never thought of putting her on the air because I looked at her and I went, how can this person be funny? You know, I, Boy, didn't I, didn't, I didn't want to take the chance. So, mm. but I loved her dearly. She was a wonderful person, and I've always felt sorry for her because she didn't have any money oh. and she was broke. And blah, 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 blah. Now it's like maybe a half a year to a year later. I'm watching the Tonight Show, and Johnny Carson goes, "Here's a brand new comic. I think you're going to enjoy, ladies and gentlemen, Roseanne Barr." And I went, "What?" Oh. <laughs> and she went on and killed. Yeah, well, she was so fresh and original for her time. Yeah. You know, working class. I mean, she didn't have any pretenses. It didn't seem to. And she spoke to a part of America that wasn't a thief, that well, wasn't it has, urban. It has, it hadn't been spoken to before. Yes, uh, exactly. And, and, and oh, her great line, I think, that sums up her act was, when I come home at the end of the day and the kids are still alive, I feel my job's been done. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And and yeah. what? How does that not speak to every mother in America, you know? And it yeah, was it she, was a great act. It was just a great oh. act. But the big mistake I made was I didn't put her on my show. I took her out to breakfast. I knew yeah. her. I helped her. I helped her along with this other other woman. I'm trying to remember the other woman's name right now, who who uh, uh, you know took her in. But uh, what you may remember was when Roseanne appeared on our show at the Quay, at the Live 105. Yes. You remember that? Do you know why she came on the show? I can't remember the I reason. got a call from Roseanne's people, because I, I, once people become very popular like she had become, she had the TV show by now, and she was with yeah. Tom Arnold and all of that. You have conduits. Uh, yeah, and uh, you figure that they just, they'll forget you. Right. I get a call from her people, and they say Roseanne wants is coming to San Francisco, and she wants to do your show. 
fun. Because yeah. she wants to thank you for the help you gave her when she was in San Francisco at the comedy competition. Then how sweet. And that's how why the, why she came on. Uh, well, it, yeah. Hollywood people seem to lose their memory very well, fast. Well, then we take this. We, okay, so now take this two years later, and I get a hold of Roseanne's people. I say I'd like to do like a phoner with her or something, or she, either she maybe was doing a show in San Francisco or something. I'd like to have her on, and uh, the, the woman says, "Okay, well I'll check." And she comes back and she says, "Roseanne doesn't know who you are." Well. See? See that? I mean, she that, didn't place right off. Yes. Well, I don't I mean, know. See, I don't know. To begin with, I don't know that the person ever talked to her. Yeah. You know, the exactly. trouble is, unless you're talking to Roseanne, you don't know you, what you she don't thinks. know what she's thinking because they maybe yeah. just say, "Well, we got to protect her. This is just some guy from San Francisco who wants to have her on his show." You know. Yeah, and if they let you get out the fact that she's been on before, and we just had a really good rapport. Um, and sometimes no, I've told, I told them all that, and I still they said Roseanne says she doesn't know who you are. Now, well, which who, le, le, you know, led me to believe it wasn't her that said that. Yeah, you got to think. And you know, someone else that's really that I, that show on, business, folks. What? Yeah. Oh, someone that was on, but they were on in kind of a when they were just. I don't think they were even middling. They might have been middling. Um, but uh, Liz Winstead. And then when she went on to do The Daily Show, mm -hmm. and then just, she really blossomed. And she was fun to have on. We used to have her on with a friend, yeah. um, Henriette Menti. And they would just do this really fun kind of uh, chicks unbarred See, I need, thing. I, uh, uh, Lori is gonna be, in the future, is gonna be my memory, okay? Because I didn't remember Harriet <laughs> Menti till you mentioned her. Uh, well, I would go home every day after the show and write the highlights. I would just write, like, we had fun today, here's why. And uh, I've got notebooks from the, a lot of notebooks from the 80s. It's a huge knapsack that I've overgrown. And just, yeah, because those were good times. And I wanted to remember them. Yeah. And details that your memory just I'll tell you, who else was very nice to me? Um, one day I get a call from Pat and Oswald. Oh, Patton, yeah. Patton's memory hasn't faded. He's awesome to this day with old friends. Well, I, I wish I knew how to get a hold of him. Let me put it that way. That's a big yeah. problem. Once you lose their phone number or ha have it for like five years and you haven't gotten the new one, you're, you're yeah. out of touch. Anyway, yeah. so Patton um, was doing a HBO special in San Francisco. And he said, I'm here in San Francisco and I'm getting ready to do my HBO special. And I just wanted to call you to thank you because I wouldn't have this special without you. Whoa, Ben, that's so, I mean, that's so yeah. heartwarming. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a genuine way. So well, that's, at, the, at that point, Patton became okay by me. You know? Yeah, oh, he's okay by me. I was in Bloomington because my life had fallen apart. Yeah. So I went to stay with mom and dad is that where people go when their life is falling apart is bloomington that's where they, if their parents are there oh, so okay. i knew <laughs> would, you know, no matter what you've done your parents are going to say well let's fix this and so i moved to bloomington and i was doing bob you know bob we play everything radio and uh, a friend of mine that worked at the stage said Patton oswald see i didn't know i didn't watch tv so i didn't know he had you know, the king and queens i didn't know of anything that had happened since Pat was on our show. And so, but I called him, I think I had his number at the time, and I called and I said, Pat, I'm thinking of coming in to watch the show. And he said, um, I don't think I, in fact, he didn't confirm it. And then I called the box office and I said that, and I didn't hear from them either. But then I just walked up at the show, walked up right after the show. And I said, Pat, and he was like, Lori. And he was, he was not a ho go to Hollywood forget your people yeah person who yeah. was he remembers people yeah yeah and so i yeah. uh, and i always liked Patton. he was a decent guy because you know. he's hilarious but i he remember i remember the guy you hated mark maron mark maron you I let, you let sir, mark maron have it one morning yeah well he was do he was being disrespectful in my eyes but as i've mentioned before we both were uh, struggling with a 
hooch problem at the time, yeah. which may, I, I mean, not on the air. I don't think we're drunk on the Well, air, I never but, had a hooch problem, so I, you know. Yeah, yeah, you did, but, uh, yeah, I, but I wish him all the success. I really like him in his movie roles now. But, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't but, nice. but he was an asshole, and uh, Sam Kinison knew he was an asshole. You know yeah, the story about Sam, his, Kin well, Sam Kinison, he was... There, there was this uh, a, a house above the comedy store, uh, uh, up, right. the, up the hill from the comedy store, and that was We're where they, where they brought up all the comics, and they had some other comics staying there on a rather permanent basis because they had nowhere to live. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, uh, they had nowhere to live, and uh, he so Kennison. hated he so hated Kinison, so hated Mark Maron. He went, while he wasn't there, went to his bedroom and peed all over his bed. <laughs> he should just say he was channeling a dachshund. You know, Mark, and I'm I figured sorry. if Sam Kinison doesn't like you like that, then you're not any good. And you, all the previous <laughs> notions I had had about him were kind of true, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I bet we'd get along just fine now because he's hooch free i'm hooch free and uh i i don't think that was the core of it i think that was an exacerbation of the venom yeah. um because because i was easily offended at that time and he was reading the newspaper just you were saying something of substance to the show and he was like reading a chronicle and he just thought that's disrespect man you're a guest here you, act like yeah, a guest you come in you sit in the chair and you go to work you know participate yeah, yeah, at least have the decency and the respect to participate. Yeah. That's why you're here yeah. instead of somebody else. Yeah, but I, but the, I remember on that show, you finally just let him have it. You remember what you said? I can't remember. You said, well, I know you've moved to Hollywood. I guess you went down there because there aren't people down there you haven't used yet. Oh, <laughs> that sounds like what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, uh, well, I was prone to um, violent, not violent at all, I wasn't a violent person, but overreaction yeah. and alcohol kind of went long hand in hand with it. Yeah, me. well, I mean, that has something to do with it, you know, but yeah. in, those case, in that case, alcohol worked to our advantage, because I just <laughs> sat there and I went, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, it's not. It's not. I, it's like sometimes people will put other people down. It's all part of the comedy, you know, and so on. Right. But in this case, this was just disdain <laughs> for the guy. You know, it was it was direct and, hit, and I yeah. appreciated it because I don't think I could have done that myself. And I don't know what I was thinking at the moment. I mean, I didn't notice he was reading the newspaper. I don't think because I'm too busy trying to keep the show going. And, exactly. And, of course, we had a couple of other comics on at the same time, so they were, you know, they were but, riffing. But that, yeah, but he was almost like, I felt at the time, like I, I may have overreacted, that he was showing blatant disrespect for what we invited him to be a part of. And uh, I just really didn't have much enthusiasm for that. Yeah. And so, yeah, but... Uh, Kennison, Kennison, when we had, I remember we had to go to, we really took a lot of grief for that because uh, of a comment he made about no, that the, had a gay the, what, what wasn't a comment, it was his act. But he, no, has, that, some, <laughs> he has some gay jokes in there, you know. But, yeah. but he, he skewered everybody, you know. He and did. Why, why, just because you're gay, should he be any less skewering than, you know, and uh, the yeah. uh, the people from Glad came by, and we had that little meeting that I walked out on after slamming the door in their face, where they came in and they played just the excerpts out of his act, you know. Which and is, when you take out anything yeah. out of context, it yeah. just loses. And finally, I just got up and say, said, you know, you're just nothing but Nazis. Yeah. I said, and I'm not going to put up with this, and I slammed the door behind me. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know but because we what them. made me well, what made me mad is I was always a friend of the gay community, as you know. You always you know. were, yeah. You know, and this was the uh, Gay and Lesbian Alliance for Anti Defamation, I think. 
And I, I, I was not that way because of uh, I was so giving. It was also you know, the day might come that I was going to be gay and that I wanted to have their good graces. Because <laughs> you know when you cross the Bay Bridge and you're moving to San Francisco. Well, after, you've been, married, after you've been married three times like I was at that time, you begin to think that there are options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm fishing in the wrong spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try another pier. You know what I love about these things we've been doing with each other? It's just that it's like we haven't stopped, you know? I know. That's what I love. It's like we picked up right where we left off. and But I had a chance to get some perspective over the years, too. Yeah. And we're like fine wine. And we started <laughs> off this conversation this time by her saying, well, last time we were talking about Thora Birch, and we were going to continue with yeah. that conversation, and we never did. <laughs> well, we were talking about her being raised by being the child of people in the porn industry. And there's a memoir having written yeah. by the... Uh, Kristen Terramino's daughter. Yeah. And so, and I love memoirs, and biography. You learn about history. You learn about empathy. You, you know, they can right. go through things so you don't have to. <laughs> I would love to see Thora Birch write a, 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 a book about growing up because these were two people who, you know, you're, with Terramino, you're only talking about a director. In the case right. of Thora Birch, you're talking about two hardcore porn actors. And Carol, right. Carol, um, uh, Connors. Connors wound up being the I don't know the not the prize girl but just the the girl who's on the Gong Show as really? as as Chuck Barris's assistant yeah <laughs> well yeah because once you're in this you're in that film industry then you can spread your wings and porn doesn't have the stigma I don't think that it well I thought it was funny that, that you know that. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Gong Show. Um, Chuck Barris. Chuck Barris uh, found her interesting. You know, yeah. that was wonderful. He w he's an interesting guy. I, I interviewed him a couple of years back before he died, and I just I thought the world of him because we're going to go over here, folks, because she's okay. more interesting than you are. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> he wrote a book called Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Yeah, wasn't it made into a movie? Yes, directed by George Clooney. Uh, okay. And and uh, it's, it was a book about his life, and it's his life story. It tells the story about how the CIA? Gong Show was created and all that. But in it, he puts this subplot that while he was doing the the um, uh, the dating game, uh, the <laughs> government hired him to be a hitman. And he would go to foreign countries when these people were sent on their date to be the chaperone. And then he would take that opportunity to kill people. Oh, how nice. And then he was a hitman <laughs> for the CIA. And uh, everybody believed this. And, and when I read it, I went, I know this guy's history. This is another put on. Yeah, you know. it's historical fiction. But people would get him on the show and they would say, did you really? And he said, if I told you what I did, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> that was always his answer. And I well, told him that I just thought it was brilliant. It was the most brilliant way to do a hoax without actually saying, hey, folks, I'm here doing a hoax. You know? Right. It was, And plus, it was a spoof of people who are yeah. always claiming to be members of the CIA. Yeah. I mean, but I thought he guy, I thought he was brilliant. I thought people. Chuck Barris was one of the most brilliant people in television. He he made these shows that he got away with. I mean, the dating uh -huh. game is an absolutely filthy show. What the gong show, you mean? And the gong show or the, uh, well, the dating game. He, he produced that, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, and they did the the uh, the um what was the thing where the married couples uh the um, what was it called? Uh, yeah. We had uh, the um, newlywed game. Newlywed, newlywed game. game. See, you're going to remember everything for me. The newlywed game, and then he did the Gong Show, and you know these were all outrageous shows. Yeah, you know? very very edgy for their time. I mean, like for instance, the newlywed game. Where, where's the oddest place you've ever had sex? And this woman, they, it actually happened. There's a video of it somewhere. She said, <laughs> "In the butt." <laughs> <laughs> no, because it, it, it must have happened because Bob Eubanks, yes. who I think oh said it did it. happen. Yeah, 
No, yeah, I thought he said it didn't happen. Did All he? I know oh, is there's, I think there's tape on it. Well, I've never seen tape on it. I just have, he was on our show, and uh, I thought he said it didn't happen. I'm going to go look see, it up on YouTube. If it's anywhere, yeah. it's on YouTube. Oh, hey, yeah, listen, we've run over time. We've done almost 30 minutes here, and uh, I just, you know, I love the hell out of you. And I we hope we keep doing these things because they're so much fun for me. And I hope well, let's, and they're so, I look forward to them, and it's just, you're like, um, you're just such a good friend. Yeah. For, that's weathered over the years. It's too bad we're not doing radio together now, but this is the second best thing. Yes, and it's more uh, prevalent now. It's almost as prevalent as terrestrial radio. Plus, there's more of you with me than was on a normal mm -hmm. show because you were going into the newsroom to put a newscast together. Out the headlines. <laughs> By the way, here's Lori with the weather. Yeah. <laughs> Today in Florida, sunny, no precipitation until 5 p.m. Oh, really? Oh, okay. There's That's no, really the, we the real weather. It's very nice here in New York. First cool day we've had. <laughs> Anyway, I love you, dear, and let's see you in another week or so, okay? Okay, absolutely. Mwah. Yeah. <laughs> Mwah. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, let me see here. Hmm, there's nobody here. There's nobody tonight who wants to do the show. What am I going to do? Well, I could, you know. I'll wait a couple of minutes, see if anybody calls. But, geez, this is, this is just utterly depressing. Oh, well, I don't care. I really don't care. Uh, we were off last night uh, because um, I, uh, I do business with a company called Go, uh, GoDaddy. Been using them for about five years, maybe longer than that. No, I, I think maybe eight years. Yeah. Ever since we started doing the uh, audio version of this show, uh, I've been using GoDaddy. And uh, all of a sudden, I get a message from them uh, like a week ago. And the message says, uh, Dear uh, Mr. Bennett, or Mr. Schwarzman, uh, we are up dating our uh, uh, what they call their uh, uh, Plesk server uh, which uh, will affect your FTP and uh, we will let you know about it so then I get another one and it says we've done it and here's your new uh, address so I try the new address and it doesn't work so I figure what the hell I keep going on and last yesterday I'm trying to set the show up and all of a sudden, nothing will work. I can't, I, I have programs that speak to the server and then put like, you know, like on the on-demand stuff, all those shows up there. And uh, uh, then you, you can listen to them through that. And so I use an FTP server to move those files over to the computer, to their computer, you understand? Okay. And it's not working. So I call them up and I say it's not working and then they say well, let's check blah, 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 blah. oh uh, you're offline and you will be till tomorrow night at like uh, eight o'clock oh boy why you know I mean you don't if if you're running a server and you're running a service that supplies a server it supplies a, a server programming uh, you uh, hope and pray that they will uh, be good and do it just fine with no problems and uh, no they weren't capable of that you know I mean let's face it I rely on being able to move things over to there and post things over there and move it onto their server like the audio or the video, this video file, later tonight, I will send over to uh, GoDaddy. When I can't do that, then I got nothing. Now, I could have still done a show last night, you could have still seen it on uh, YouTube, which is pretty damn reliable, and uh, I could have, uh, uh, when, one way or another, moved things around and made them work 
without using their FTP server, but it was just too much trouble. And I had too many things bothering me yesterday that I didn't need this one as well. And so I, you know, I just, uh, I killed it. I didn't do the show last night. So tonight I'm not doing, the, I am doing the show and nobody's calling. And I, you know, it just uh, doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, I'm very sorry, folks, that I was off last night. But, you know, it was all because of GoDaddy. And then today I, I look at and, and it says, uh, you're going to be um, uh, off for a while. It, you, your, your site just isn't working. Your, 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 um, uh, what do you call it? Your, uh, your, your, your program, it, it just isn't working for you, you know. And uh, I said to them, well, you know, I, I talked to them and I said, I just don't believe this. You know, I rely on you people and, and you shouldn't go down like this. You should be able to, you know, if you want to go down for an hour or two, fine, I understand that and I'll, I'll live with it. But to go down for almost, you know, 36 hours, it's just ridiculous, you know. And, uh, it, and then I think, you know, I'm going to get rid of GoDaddy. Screw them. I'll go to somebody else. And then I go, well, then I got to move my entire site over to somebody else. And, oh, it was just, it's too much trouble to get out of that. So I don't know. I just, I give up, you know. All these things, all these little pieces of, of uh, crap happening. But anyway, so that was uh, that was uh, the problem I was having with. Uh, um, oh, and then finally, they say, "Okay, everything's working now," and I still can't get it to work. And so now I have to call them up, and they put me through a whole bunch of stuff. And they said, "Oh, you better change your password." So once I changed my password, everything worked. But it was too much trouble just. Do whatever you got to do. Tell me the new number I've got to use, and then that's it, you know. Instead, it was a pain in the ass, just an absolute pain in the ass. We have one person, one person, one little human being here that wants to talk to me. So we'll put him on, and uh, let's see here. It's, it's Alan. Hello, Alan. Yeah, I've been listening to you talk for about 10 minutes, but I don't know. I didn't know if you had a GoDaddy problem still or not. But why would I? I would have put it up, wouldn't I? I'd say, <clears> I would say <throat> I still had it. Yeah. I'm the only one that's calling tonight. You're the that's, only one that's calling. Yeah. That's sad. <clears throat> well, you know, that makes me say, why should I have gone on tonight? <laughs> you know, if not to just play off uh, Lori's video. Yeah. Yeah, which you know, of course I like doing, you know. So. Right, she's good to listen to. So anyway, so uh, you know, but I mean, GoDaddy was just driving me crazy, just driving me nuts. You know, I, I shouldn't have to go through all of that, you know. And yeah. uh, uh, it, it, uh, I, I'm an old man. I can't take this kind of stuff. <laughs> Hello, Don Giller. Hello, how are you, Don? Are you there? Can you hear me? So, uh, you know, but I oh, mean, there, 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 Don. Don, can you hear me? Yeah, is, is there an echo? I, I shouldn't have to go through all of that. I think you're, you're, it's coming from your, your. Yeah. Uh, Let me shut it man. off. I can't take uh, this guy. Uh, Hello, Don Geller. Hang on. How are you? Sorry. Well, we're Turn the browser off. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find it. Hang on. Or, I mean, continue without me. I'll, I'll get this straight. Oh, okay. Well, it's hard to continue without you because we keep hearing the playback of the show in back of us. Just kill, if you have your browser up, just get rid of your browser. Get rid of your browser. Hang on. How are you? Sorry. We're, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm trying to find it. Hang on. Or, I mean, continue without me. <laughs> okay. Well, it's hard to continue without you because you keep hearing. Well, the you. numbers should get really good now because we're having technical <laughs> problems. Just chill. If you have your browser, I can't just find it. Your browser. Look, what are you using? Are you using a uh, PC? Are, are you using a PC, Don? 
No. No, it. using a Mac? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Oh, boy. Well, wow, geez. <laughs> He's usually pretty good, you know. Yeah. He knows yeah. technology. He's pretty good <laughs> at it. Oh, well. So, anyway. He'll be back, I'm sure. Yeah. So, anyway, that was my problem with... Uh, with uh, with GoDaddy and and you know you just like to think that okay if they have to go down they'll they'll go down for two hours in the middle of the night and do what they have to do right right but to say we're going down we're not we're taking you completely offline for twenty four hours uh, don't they think that some of their customers have stuff to post onto their server you know so. yeah. Ray Renati just sent me a message, and I'm going to say Alex needs people. No, I don't. Because if if this doesn't uh, work, <coughs> uh, if a lot of people, more people don't call, I'll just. Uh, he said he was trying. So. You know, uh, here here comes here comes Don again. Let's uh, see now. Let's see, let's see how Don's doing now. Don, I think I hope we're okay. Are we okay? Yeah. No okay. Echo. Did you find out where your browser was? <laughs> it was it was in a separate tab that I didn't I couldn't find. In a separate tab? Yeah. No, I mean that all is well. I'm just being an I don't idiot. know. I can't think straight either. You know. Well, I need to turn this off as well. Yeah. Yeah. But uh uh Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, no, you're alone, so I thought I'd uh and, and uh, but 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 now there's there are three of us, or two of you. Well, no, uh, two, two of you and one of me. Well, there was always one of you. <laughs> well, it's because it's my show. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, that's that's what the title is. It, it, let me ask you: You don't post any new new Letterman stuff, do you? Correct. Now, I how don't. How come it keeps coming up? Because. Uh, because previous uploads are still there, so you can still find. Now, I know I, that. I know that. But how come it like uh, it's always there? You know, like on my uh, just my list of sh of things to watch, it's Don Giller stuff. Okay, but it but it's older stuff. I'm not I'm not clear when you say it's. it's I mean, still is there some way you're able to push it to the front? Oh no, that those are those are YouTube's algorithms. I would think, and if you if you watch one video of mine, or I mean, right now my my current obsession is watching uh, uh, police cam videos of drunk drivers. Um, and once you watch once you watch well, one of them, yeah. they'll all pop up. You know, for for for, for further watching. I know, so I think that's what's going I, on. I know that, but I really enjoy them. I just really enjoy them, Don. Oh, good. You oh do I appreciate your, that. That's very job. nice. Well, are you mm -hmm. are you are you putting any stuff up of other people now, or? Yeah, well, I'm putting stuff up of uh, uh, um, music that a friend of mine and I composed and recorded, and we're and we're slowly putting up videos of that music that would that were that that uh, or to to accompany the music. Uh, in fact, I put up a new one uh, uh, last Friday or Saturday. Really? Oh, well, that's yeah. terrific. That's terrific. So, uh, and I, I sometimes put up uh, uh, Tonight Show videos, uh, the, the the Johnny Carson Tonight Shows, um, uh, and they're okay with that as long as they monetize it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, they they have no problem with it. No, they don't. Which is as I long mean, they're as very, they're very as, sweet. As long as they monetize it. Yeah, yeah. Which which they should. It's their how content. Do you, how do you do that for them? In other words, I know how you monetize it, how I monetize these shows for me, but how right. would I monetize, the, let's say I put up something, monetize a show for somebody else, and yet be the one putting it up. Well, either either they'll find it on their own, whether it's automatic or, 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 or just looking for it, mm -hmm. uh, or in my case, I'll, I'll email them and say, look, I'm putting this up. I'll, I'll let them know. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm. I'm. Then it surprises me. They're they're very smart about it, because they realize that's extra money coming in for them, even though it's you doing all the work. Yeah. Back back in uh, the fall of 2019, I put up a whole bunch of Johnny and Dave, um, but 
nearly all of it came from their licensing site. And that was a no-no. That, that you can't do. Yeah. Um, and mean, they took it down, mm -hmm. and, I, and I emailed them. And I, I lost the channel because of it, because I had too many strikes. Um, and, and appealed to their good nature. Uh, and they said, okay, j we'll, we'll rescind the strikes as long as you take the stuff down. I said, well, that's all I'm asking. So they've been great. Well, I'm, glad, one I'm glad that Don got on the show because I couldn't have this much interesting stuff <laughs> to talk about. Actually, you know, I wanted to ask you something. You you were a cop or you still a cop? Yeah, I, I was. And I was just going to say to you, you ought to see through the windshield what drunk drivers look like. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just going to say that. But, yeah, I was. Go ahead. But in, in, in what capacity? What position? What were you doing? Usually, well, on, usually on his knees. Usually on, I was going to say sorry, usually on his knees. <laughs> right, right, on my knees, on my knees, that's right. So, um, somebody had to do the female searches. Uh, so anyhow, uh, <laughs> no, I'm a patrol officer, mainly, uh, and I work, uh, detective, uh, uh, worked in uh, narcotics for a while and a little bit of gang task force, that type of stuff. Did you, did you ever get hurt? <laughs> that, all the time. Well, that's why you know, he's not a cop fights. Everybody wants to fight. And I, 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 they call it verbal judo now, where you talk your way out of a fight. But I would, I would do that, um, not knowing it was verbal judo, and just would, you know, and I, I talked my way out of a lot of fights, because although I was big and strong in those days, now I'm just fat and old. But uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't like fighting, so I, I never provoke fights. I know a lot of cops that like to fight and they provoke them and stuff like that unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Well, also, you're no longer a, a, a policeman because you 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 did uh, you, you you got hurt, right? Right. Yeah. So I was doing a narcotics sting thing, and we were selling heroin, I think, at that time, to uh, street thugs in the area that I work in. And uh, where where was this? In the Bay Area, mm -hmm. in Fremont. And so. Um, you know, I, somebody that I sold some drugs to was said, you shorted me last time and spit on me. I mean, the, the ugly thugs that were around me were also cops. And one of the guys, uh, neighboring city had a canine officer in case the guy ran. Well, this guy spit on me. And then I identified myself and he went running and we went jumping over some people's fences. Mm -hmm. And I went over one fence and he had cleared a layer of pallets in the backyard that I didn't clear and I blew out my knee. Mm. He was laughing on the other side. I had a gun pointed at him. He knew who I was. Uh, but he knew I wasn't going to shoot him. But the dog didn't know that he his testicles didn't taste so good. So the <laughs> dog came in. The guy opened the gate and the dog came running in grabbed him by the groin. And, uh, you know, uh, I went on limited duty for a while and then got retired out. So, yeah. Police dogs, are they, you know, they, they, they caught this guy, you know, who I think did the, a really great escape out of that prison in Oh, I think so, too. I think that was you know, I, we, stupid. Well, security. here's the, I'll tell you what's stupid, though. You do something like that, it is ambrosia. Okay? It's a, have you seen this thing, Giller, about the guy no. who... He, 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 how can I best describe it, uh, uh, Alan? He escaped from jail. Well, he escaped from jail, but he did it in a very unique way. There was a wall, two walls, and he two was kind of a short and he, guy. Yeah. And he just kind of put his back yeah, against it. Up. And, he, and he shimmied up, got up to the roof, then got to a place where he could jump off and not be seen or whatever. And he escaped, and he was gone for 15 days. They couldn't find him. And they found him with, what, 30, 40 miles away? Something yeah, like well, that. here's oh, the this, thing. This, this I, is the Philadelphia thing, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. you say right. to yourself, why, if this guy is that good to get out of prison, why in the world didn't he just get the hell out of Dodge? You know, the first thing... He was he, Mexican. They were thinking he would go to Mexico. Anywhere. Because anywhere. he wasn't a smart criminal? Well, apparently they're all dumb because this has just happened recently again, but not with somebody shimmying. This time, the, <laughs> the cops let the 
guy go and he was a murderer oh, oh yeah right yeah right. yeah they let him go they bye yeah. see you later come on nice having yeah, you yeah. here you know and so he, the, the, the the thing with me is I, I mean i started my career with the sheriff's department and even then in 1980 mm -hmm. in the jail system if we had a play yard for them to play in the, the inmates to exercise or whatever they had they had cyclone fencing that went 12 feet up in the yard with inside the jail and then they had cyclone fencing over the top so they couldn't just climb up it and go over it mm -hmm. if you look at this guy in the video that they call crab walking i've never heard of that before that climbed up the wall and was gone there was nothing to stop him up above the wall they probably and nobody they they probably think he could be spider-man i don't know well, maybe we've we've discovered that cops are stupider than the criminals. Yeah, maybe. I mean, really, I'm serious about criminals it. Criminals can be pretty smart the way they escape from jail. But, I mean, they I'm were sitting sure. around. They were sitting around talking about this guy and going, "Well, we we'll we'll catch him eventually." You know, now it's getting to be 15 days, and you're beginning to think, "Are they ever going to find him?" Well, if I lived out there, I felt sorry for him. I would have invited him in for dinner or something. They probably went and graduated the police academy by the time they found him. You know. I mean, if he wanted to, how how would he have gotten to Mexico? What 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 resources did he have? Well, I mean, Jake, anywhere. Can you just look, hitchhike. I don't know. You know, you you, you if you're going to do that, if you're going to escape then you should have a plan on how you're going to get as far away as possible before they yeah. even notice you're gone. You mm. know, that you break into a house that's unoccupied, you change your clothes, you shower, you shave, you had a beard, you shave your beard off, which he eventually did, um, and you put different clothes on, and you, you, you look nice, and then you hitchhike to uh, Mexico. Yeah. That's how, I guess that's how I would have done it. It seems simple. Well, anyway, so this latest guy... Uh, they just uh, they 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 let him go. It was oh, no. they, they just released him, and he was it, he was in there for murder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so was the other guy in Pennsylvania, but the guy that they released for murder, um, the 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 in booking, the the lady screwed up on two of the charges and released him, but they had a hold on him in another state, and she called them and she said, "Yeah, the hold's gone." The, the other lady. So two ladies in two different states signed off on it, and he walked. Wow. And, and he wasn't smart enough to say, oh, wait a minute, I think this is a mistake. Well, <laughs> I, don't think he, I don't think he would have done I'm that. being sarcastic. So, yeah. but, what no, what but, got I'm, you into the field? Uh, was your dad a cop? No, a personal friend of the family was a mm -hmm. Richmond, California cop. And... Um, Appealed to you. It appealed to me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't apply there because it was like, uh, it's almost an hour drive in each direction. There's a lot of traffic. So I applied in the city that I live in and I applied for the sheriff's department. The city I lived in at the time wasn't hiring, but they were taking applications. And the sheriff's department was hiring like crazy. And so I went through the police academy or the sheriff's academy, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same thing. And, uh, Became a deputy sheriff, worked in the jail, worked transportation, uh, did some patrol in about a year and a half. And then the city that I applied in originally said, we're now hiring you again. Come finish your testing. Mm -hmm. And as it worked out, I ended up leaving the sheriff's department thinking I had a job. And it was kind of on hold. So I ended up being a reserve officer for that city for a few months. And then they hired me. Getting, but, they actually they actually got to see that I was qualified to do the job, and they hired me. And well, at least you don't let prisoners go. <laughs> but no. as a as a reserve officer, were you you were not paid? Not paid. It's a voluntary position. Uh -huh. Phil, Phil Meyer was a Alex called him a rent a cop and sent him steam out of his ears, but uh, he was a reserve officer for Richmond police mm -hmm. uh, for 21 years did he yeah. did he hate that when i called him a rent a cop oh god he hated it so bad and then i brought it up again a week later i said yeah you know unlike phil who's a, he was on the show a reserve officer he said why didn't you stand up for me and tell everybody that you were reserved too i said because these people don't care about the police you know well, I mean, why, why 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 defend you on something that every that it's just going to turn into an argument 
Alex is entitled to his opinion, his opinion you are renting. Well, I mean, I like to kid people. Right, right. You know, right. all I was doing was kidding. And so does he. Huh? You know, and so he took offense to it. I don't know why he took offense to it. You know, he should have just said, yeah, I, you know, my rent was free. <laughs> you know, he never got paid for it. But um, yeah. while, while you were a reserve officer, how did you support yourself? Uh, I had savings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the the, the gone uh, the Don uh, Giller Foundation paid me <laughs> some money too. <laughs> I do what I can, but I keep it quiet. And I wish. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. People here. Uh, let's let's take that out of the video. Yeah, yeah please do. It. He has a podcast on YouTube, and he makes about a hundred dollars every two months. You know. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, here's what amazes me about Giller and about you, uh -oh. you Don. I'm is, leaving. Huh? I'm leaving. You're leaving. <laughs> Yeah. No, he, sure. what, what's amazing about you is that you really did an am amazing amount of work. I mean, I don't know how many hours you put up, but I can only imagine, right? Which you had to edit and dub off and do things like that, right? Uh, I, as you should know by now, I'm really uncomfortable hearing stuff like that well all i'm um, saying is you went to all that trouble and you didn't take a penny for it you know i don't know you i don't know you well don but i'm assuming you're talking about porn no <laughs> that is anyway, like point. talking about it i'm teasing don. <laughs> but no but i mean the, the fact that you did here's, that here's what i liked about doing that stuff yeah um no one else was mm -hmm. it's as simple as that when did you uh, start doing it? I guess uh, a few months after the show ended, late show ended, and and which was in May of fifteen. Oh, really? Okay. I, I started putting up, I think, individual stuff that fall, and I think starting in maybe twenty sixteen, I started putting up compilations, and 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 what what I what I enjoyed was the fact that I'm thinking no one else is doing this. You know, right now I'm watching stuff that no one else is watching. I kind of like that. I I, I I like that aspect of it. Just just. Uh, well, also your compilations were extraordinary, and to me they, they took a, they took a lot of work because you had to know where. Like when you did a, a say you do a but, compilation of everything that Woody Harrelson ever did or something like that. On, yeah. On, on I the, haven't, but that's okay. Uh, no, but I'm just using that <laughs> yeah. as an example. Yeah. I mean Charles Grodin and Charles uh, Grodin or whatever, yeah. and that you then knew where all those shows were in your files. But that's that's why I like doing it because I had the resource to do it that I that, in my thinking, no one else did. So why not use those resources to do something that no one else is doing? No, so you're, you're pioneering something. Well, he's also uh, he's also privately very wealthy. <laughs> you know, the, the, at online you, you can you can uh, Google a celebrity's net worth, uh, and and I don't know how those, they come up with that. Yeah, and and so I looked I looked myself up, and it said I had a net worth of like 1.2 million dollars, that was based only on the myth that I was monetizing my YouTube channel. The myth? Uh, they, they said yeah. the myth? No, no, that's me. You know, oh, they're they're, oh, they're okay. assuming that I'm I'm getting all this all this all this revenue from YouTube, and that's how they calibrated this amount of 1.2 million. Well, you me, know, so I put on Facebook. You know, they're only off here. by one net point, worth. Only off by 1.2 million. So net worth. Alex Bennett. <laughs> Twenty nine dollars. <laughs> so it's Michigan All Republican from YouTube. Party. Is Alex Bennett divorcing? Who is Alex <laughs> Bennett's husband? What is that? <laughs> well, you got to be uh, careful because Alex can be a woman too. So wait a minute. How did Alex Bennett get famous? There you Alex go. Bennett is a popular TV personality. Barstool blogger. There is a guy named Alex yes, Bennett. Yes, I, I should I should get him to stop. You know. Appearing on Bravo TV show Sweet Home. If he belongs to After, he can't use it. Oh, there we go. Alex Bennett, broadcaster. My net worth is $3.46 million. 
I want to be your friend. Is that is that me that there is? Yeah, yeah. That really? I don't think there's any other broadcaster named Alex Bennett, is there? Let's see here. Uh, Network. It's it's going up. Good, good. Barstool's Alex Bennett. What what is this now? Alex Bennett broadcaster. broadcaster. Yeah, you're going up. They heard about your inheritance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I I wish I had that. Well, according to this, you do. Because today, my lawyer had to write yet another letter to somebody, and so I figure there's another couple of thousand dollars, you know. Yeah, but with what you're getting, it's pennies, you know. With what I'm getting? Yeah. I'm not getting anything. Well, we I, we you we know what you're getting. What do you mean? The cheap rent? No, 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 no. If you're referring to... Uh, oh, no, no, that's another... That You mean the, yeah, the inheritance. Okay. Right, I, right. Yeah, well, we won't... We don't when you're, you're talking about ribbing people and, and, and knowing that they'll take it well, mm. um, last Thursday, Mike Chisholm <coughs> um, didn't have any guests for the following... That, that he could put it for the following day. So it was very last minute, and I agreed to be his guest. Um and I said something very cruel about you, Alex. But it was, but it was, but we laughed about it because we knew what it was, what it, what it, it was in jest. Now, what was that comment? Uh, you, you'll have to watch it. No, I don't want to watch it it, it. it will lose in translation if no, I explain. No, it. no, no. But come on, what did you say? What did you say? Come on. I can't. It, it, uh, honestly, it'll it 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 will be even more crueler. You mean I have to listen to Chisholm's podcast? It's 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 within the first five minutes. Is it up already? Yeah, it's up. It was up the last Friday. Well, I will. Uh, I I guess I will if you say it's in the first five minutes. All right. Wait, here's what I'll do. Let me, <laughs> let me grab it and and I'll put it up. It, you put it up. Where will I mean, you put I, it? You know, I'll put it up to the screen. Uh, you'll put it up to the screen. Okay. So let me. We have no time. We we have no guests tonight at all. Nobody calling this damn show. Oh, so thanks. We, th- what are we? Chopped liver? Yes, yeah, you really. are. You are. And I <laughs> love chop chop liver. So don't right. you know? You might not uh, feel bad about insulting you. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So he didn't have any guests, and so he said, "I I don't have any guests. Will you do my show?" Did you yeah, feel so, a bit insulted by that? No, no, no. I, I've been I've been refusing to be his guest for the last two years. Oh, okay. Anyway, so did you did you find the first five minutes of that show? I'm I'm waiting. I, I'm I'm watching it. I'm waiting for the moments. For the oh, for the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> huh? Yeah. And that's you only know, because I, nobody I, I else really has called this program you talking tonight. talking about Michael O'Donnell because you, because you knew so many people, and I just found I found that relationship fascinating, and I wish you oh, I, oh, oh. I would have liked to hear you talk more about that. Michael O'Donnell, not, not just Michael O'Donnell, but but everybody that that you become friends with. Oh well, that would take a long time. Well, that's I, what we're here for. No one else is here. That's right. Yeah. I love I love the uh, you made a statement after you called Phil a rent a cop. That you you know you were talking to him about something else, and you said, hey, you know, I, you know nothing, Phil. Alan was a real cop. <laughs> that also pissed him off. It was funny. <laughs> He's like, you should stand up for me. Yeah, well, uh, I um, um, yeah, I and Michael O'Donoghue, uh, yeah, that that's he he's one he's one of the first friends of mine that died. Mm-hmm. The only the only person so. that died before that I had a friend in Houston, Texas, that I'd started a business with. We mm-hmm. we started a business selling concert posters. Nobody else was doing it. We were the first ones to do it uh, because my cousin's husband, Victor Moscoso, was the artist for the Family Dog, and so mm-hmm. we made a deal with him to take his posters and to sell them. We sold them in I can't remember where it was now. We made a little bit of money on it, but this guy was my partner. I left Houston, Texas. Next thing I know, he gets murdered. He's he's taken out to a field and shot through the head. Wow. 
Really? And it turns out that it had something to do with his father having a bad relationship with somebody and they wanted to get even with him, so they killed the, the son. Oh, wow. That was the first person I ever had die on me. Yeah. And that was, that was pretty rough to take. Yeah. How about? Yeah. So how, how are you doing in finding it? I, I had it and now I'm trying to backtrack and now I'm, I have to do it. Could you okay. put it on double speed? We don't have all night. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently we do. Oh. <laughs> well, I could probably actually get it right now off the web. Quicker than dawn, too. Quicker than dawn and play the damn thing right here. I'll go back to my rice bowl. Your rice bowl? Is that what you're okay, eating? Okay, I think here we go. Okay. I was, I, I thought you, okay, part of me thought you, okay, part of me thought you did Alex Bennett's show just to just to say oh yeah okay i'm not gonna do the letterman podcast but i'll do alex's show and 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 to give me a little bit of the gears which i well, think he's is older right. he's gonna die soon <laughs> <laughs> or sooner than us we hope. he almost made me do a legitimate spit take there. hey listen that was it <laughs> listen i'm giller I it was, was it was it was cruel. it was cruel but you know it was, it was in the well, moment. I wouldn't so. make a statement like that, Giller, because look at who I've outlived so far. <laughs> you know, people we didn't expect I'd outlive, you know. Did you think I'd outlive Shecky? Uh, no. You know, I, 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 I think about him every damn day. I, I do, too. You know. I, I didn't know who he was until I saw him on your show. Yeah. And then after he died, Phil told me a little bit about him. And I went on and watched. I just put Rick Sheckman up there. And boy, there are just all kinds of videos of him doing skits on Letterman and stuff. And I'm like, wow, this guy was really talented. And well, then, no, no, he, he, no, no. In, he that, in that respect, yeah. he wasn't talented. As a performer, no. Uh, but he was so shall we say untalented at that that he was funny yeah that, that's what made him appealing on the tv that, that, that it, he wasn't, it, letterman that he, did that with a lot of people larry bud yeah. melman as an example right you know um and uh that was an example of somebody with no talent except he thought he did have talent that's the difference covered the bars did he uh, took he, himself seriously did he really yeah wow. Because um, <laughs> he used to like to give him <laughs> things to say that were impossible for him to read, mm -hmm. you know. And and he hated heights, so that's why they they would put him, uh, they would have him introduce Dave from the balcony when he was in Chicago because it was way high up there, <laughs> just, just to make him uncomfortable. <laughs> oh man, that's great stuff. Yeah, uh, but Rick, yeah, Rick, Rick had no acting talent. He was just, and, and that's what made his TV presence so appealing because he was just. If he had a talent, and it, yeah, I think it definitely was a talent. On Letterman, he was, he, was he, he, in a way, he yeah. was kind of like you are, Giller. He was a resource. You know, this was a guy you could go to, and anytime you wanted to find out something about movies up until about 1960, because then he faded mm -hmm. out on you. Uh, he could tell you anything. You know, I call him all the time. I say, I just saw this movie on Turner Classic Movies, and there's this actor named blah, blah, blah. And it was like some just unknown actor, okay? And he say, oh, yes, that was so-and-so, and he was in such and such, and blah, 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 blah. And, uh, I mean, he gave me, a, you know, an appreciation of movies like I've never had. You know. Have you had a chance to, to uh, look further through his hard drives? The films I've gone through his hard drives. Uh, there's a lot there. Um, and can you watch them? Can you can you open them up and watch? Oh, what it, what it is is they're all on the the, ba the basic ones uh, that he had as his as his uh, uh, what do you call it his uh, his archive uh, or all on. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, hard drives, uh, portable hard drives, or external hard drives. Yeah, right. <clears throat> so I can hook them up to any of my computers and just run them. What's on this one? I plug it in, boom, mm -hmm. look and see. I also bought a thing so that I he had some old hard drives that go in the computer. Internal so, drive. Yeah. 
internals. Uh, and those you can't, you can't just plug in, but I got a little thing where I just hook it into this thing and it plays them and I can get on those. So, yeah, it, 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 I have a, it, I have a device that that turns an internal drive into an external drive, and then you plug it in as if it's yeah. an external. This drive. This is just a little clip thing that you put on yeah. the top of the thing, and then you put it. Yeah, if and if if you ever want to come over, we can go through the drives together. You can see what he's got there. Well, that yeah. that Monday when I was gonna drop by, mm -hmm. you gave me the wrong address, and I went there, and and Mandy was there, so we had a nice time. What? what? <laughs> you didn't. You're lying. <laughs> Did uh, have you have you cracked the password yet? No, I, that I I said to hell with it. I I don't mm -hmm. need the password because I've got well, I I took the drive out of his computer and hooked it in like we just were describing, and I could see it, everything that was on the drive. So there's only one internal drive. He only had one internal drive. Okay. Right? Does that drive? That drive didn't have anything on it of great note. But it did. did I'm hoping that it, it, it that it had included his databases. I don't think it did. Okay. But I don't know for sure. I could I could plug it back in and look, and see. The, the, they would probably be uh, Excel files, I would think. Excel do, do files. You, do you have the Excel program application? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Um, all right, I'll I'll drop by and and uh, uh, and have Marjorie distract you, and I'll grab what I can. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, Mar There's no way Marjorie can distract me anymore. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll invite Mandy back. I'm up. impervious to her charms, <laughs> as it were. Yeah. The perfect In, marriage. The trouble is, is if you invite Mandy back, you'll never get Alex out of the room. Yeah. <clears throat> But anyway, I, just, I can't even, I, I'm having a hard time walking. I went for a walk yesterday around the block, and it, it, it's rough for me. I don't know what it, what that's all about. Hard to walk or painful? No, not hard to walk, just it, weak. My legs are weak. They get tired. Yeah. 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 So I've got to do more walking, you know. I used to go. I used to go again? two, three miles on a walk, you know. And lately, I can't even go. Uh, I can maybe go a mile, you know. Well, that's pretty good. Mile That's pretty not good. bad. You take your cane with you? Yes, that's I do. I, and you like know, eighteen what, blocks, you know, eighteen New York City blocks. Anyway. Well, you know why I do? I'm yeah. oh, sorry. I, I said. Do that you know, you. Do you know why I do? No. Why? Uh, because uh, I'm afraid of falling. Yeah. So I, I I don't need the cane to walk, but I need it there for assurance that I'm not going to fall. Mm -hmm. You know, so. what are my lips mm. so red for? See that? Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Something you've been drinking? No, no. It's no. the lipstick that you promised not to put on anymore. I don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> uh. The, the the inside of the mug's red. Exactly. <clears throat> right. Well, but the mug that doesn't come off of a mug. <laughs> but that's a nice look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 attractive. <laughs> are you uh, oh, Gil? Oh, are oh, you yeah, in oh. New York? Hmm? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm actually very close to Alex. Yeah. Um, so close, he could almost come see me. Yeah, but that would that would <clears throat> the the ankle bracelet kind of prevents me from going anywhere. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, what you you're still oh, oh oh guess what? Here's a you know, okay. So I'm really pissed off about GoDaddy, right? Okay, <laughs> that's enough, in and of itself. The other day I'm supposed to go, this Friday, up to Rite Aid, to go get a new COVID shot, right? It turns out, or maybe this was, was this last week where I was supposed to go? But anyway, we got a thing saying, we've had to cancel your appointment due to a lack of ability of, uh, of COVID vaccination stuff. They don't have the supplies. They don't, we don't have the supplies. And it turns out they're supplying the whole country you know where they're not supplying very well? A little place called Harlem. 
Mm-hmm. And so I, and I, I, I got there, both the COVID vaccine, the new one, and and the flu shot today. Really? Um, Pfizer doesn't have the. But you the, don't live in Harlem, do you? No, this this was on uh, one uh, <clears throat> Broadway and One Eleventh Street. Oh, I'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and if you can, I mean, they had they had ample supply. I was talking to the pharmacist who who administered the shots, mm. um, and I said, uh, you know, a lot of people are 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 making appointments, unlike previous vaccine or uh, boosters, anyway. Mm. Um, and I said, "Are you afraid you're going to run out?" And he said, "We'll probably run out in a day or two, but but we'll we'll just get another supply." But had I known this about Harlem, I would have, uh, I would have raised my voice. Yeah. So they then then now they have rescheduled me, and they decided when, okay, rather than say, "Here, here are some choices of days and mm-hmm. whatever," and so I got to get up at like nine thirty in the morning to go get a shot. At the at the same right aid. At that the same have right aid. Yeah. How far is it from you? It's walking distance for me, a block. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. I hope you make it. The, I hope I make it too. <laughs> Thank God for the cane. Anyway, uh, no, but I didn't get the frustration. I, I had an appointment for 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. I didn't get the shot until 4:20. Why? I had to wait an hour and 20 minutes Why? before she. Really? Why? Because they're, they're so backed up. The pharmacist, she was, she was doing two two jobs. She was doing pharmacy stuff and, and giving shots to people. And things just got backed up. Wow. But but I got it. And uh, actually about two hours ago, I was feeling really fatigued. But I'm okay now. I woke up and then realized that no one else, no one was on your show. So I figured, let's, let's feel sorry for Alex. <laughs> well, thank you for feeling sorry for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I like it when people find me pathetic. Well, I didn't say pathetic. I oh. just felt sorry. Oh, okay. They're well, different things. Oh, well, I find you pathetic. How's that? Well, uh, there's there's pitiful, but not pathetic. Husband, Alex Bennett's husband meet Graham Bennett. What is the, What is all this? Where does Alex Bennett live? Oh, there's a picture of me. Okay. <laughs> it says, currently resides in Harlem District of New York City. Bennett was told in late June that his last show on Sirius XM would be Friday, June 28, 2013. Do you realize it's been 10 years? Wow. Since they let me go over at, uh, over at Sirius XM. This is good. Who, who is Alex Bennett's husband? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's much we don't know about. about you know what happened? This guy Alex Bennett came along, and he was doing this podcast called. I don't know, it's something to do. Yeah. With uh, uh, but it says is Alex Bennett divorcing. Who's Alex Bennett's husband? Well, there he is. Oh, he's a trans. Oh, I'm glad the other Alex Bennett is a trans. I got to find out. If he's listed with SAG after, because if he is, he can't use my name. <clears throat> and, and he's probably collecting your mm-hmm. royalties. Well, I was yeah. watching one of, it, it might have been one of yours, a Tom Snyder Tomorrow show with a guy named, who, who was his uh, announcer on his show, whose name was Donald Rickles. Mm-hmm. Was that one of yours? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, but, okay. Uh, but Donald Rickles, and he said the reason he uses Donald Rickles is Don Rickles came into the business after he was in it as Don Rickles. And uh, he got very popular, he got uh, somewhat popular, but he asked him if he could use his other name so he could keep Don Rickles, and he did it for him. So he started I, I, using I Donald at- Rickles. What? I, I worked at BMI for around seven hellish weeks in early. BMI 80s. is Business Music Incorporated. Right. Yeah. Um, and I was in the data administration department, mm-hmm. which was, and 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 my job was to look through archives of payments to people and straighten out errors, <clears throat> because the, the wrong people were making money off of uh, off of the legitimate artists. Mm-hmm. And I, there, there's, there was a person making tons of money. His name was Davis Miles. <laughs> so, 
So. Was it Davis, comma, Miles? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I could see something like that happening with you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, son of a bitch. Well, anyway, uh, you know. So, uh, but I, I supposedly see if I, if you have a name like I have Alex Bennett, and I'm a member of SAG after him, no one else can use that name, mm -hmm. unless they want to pay me to get rid of mine. In which case, I'm more than happy to go back to Bennett <laughs> Schwarzman. You know. Well, change to Alexandra. I would like to see my, you know, I have to redo all my artwork here to have Bennett Schwarzman fit on the frame. But I, I got, you see, I didn't use Bennett Schwarzman because I thought that was a very unwieldy name when I first got into radio, all right? Then along comes Arnold Schwarzenegger and the guy's a big hit, okay? And I'm saying to myself, why did I ever change it from Bennett Schwarzman? So he, he, had, he had an accent. He was, he was Austria, Austrian. He overcame every liability you could possibly have yeah. and still became a star. You know. And but a governor. Be, but I'll tell you, nobody else in SAG after can have the name uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was, I think his first appearance on Letterman, uh, Dave asked what, what his last name meant in English. I think it was Black Plowman. Yeah, I watched that the other day, yeah. Black Plowman, and, and Dave said, gee, uh, uh, you're, uh, Maria you're, Schreiber. Maria Schwa Schreiber is probably going to love uh, introducing you <laughs> to her husband, to her family, as uh, Arnold Be Pl Mary. Plowman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh oh, what's that? Yeah. Um, yeah. What else? So, oh, uh, 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 Mike interviewed uh, your, your one, the, the, someone who you're a big fan of, uh, Dick Cavett. Well, uh -oh, I, I, I've no. no, he asked me if, if there was any advice I had to him oh, right, right. about interviewing Dick Cavett, and I said, my advice to you is don't. <laughs> it went off well, because I, 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 I sat through it and I, I piped in towards the end. Uh, to, to me, he was very entertaining, and he was far more alert than I had suspected him being, because he's he's 86 now. Yeah. Um, uh, and he enjoyed it, which which made it watchable. Yeah. Um, so that'll be up tomorrow, and and, uh, and you'll be quizzed. You have to watch that too. Do I have to watch that? No. Yeah, you have to. Uh, no, I can. Uh, I, look, he doesn't. I don't have to watch it. I can tell you. No, you do. You I do been, have to watch I can it. tell you everything. The Dick had to talk about. It's yeah, uh, Groucho Marx. How and much Groucho. did he mention Groucho Marx? Um, <laughs> I lost count. Yeah, you see, you see, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was like when I interviewed uh, Mickey Rooney years ago, and I really didn't want to have him on the show because a couple of nights before that, he had been on the Joan Rivers TV show, the one that went opposite Carson, mm -hmm. and it was the only time I ever felt sorry for Joan Rivers. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, he was just he took he like hijacks the show, yeah, yeah. right? And he comes on my show and he starts into the whole bit, and this is the one he did everywhere. You know, if Judy Garland had just called me, she'd still be alive today. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Judy and I were the two biggest stars in the world, and if she had just called me, she wouldn't. I'm going, God, I can't mm -hmm. stand this. You know, he was doing the same thing on my show. You should have finished his sentences. Probably could have. But that yeah. was, you know, there are some of these people that all they do is they keep telling the same stories everywhere. Uh, I mean, but, but it wasn't it wasn't that uh, um, overwhelming. You, uh, yeah. I, I mean, he did. Uh, it, Groucho came up. I brought up Groucho once. And, mm. and, and that led him to talk about a very funny story that, that, that he had. Uh, but he talked about other things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. most, mostly other things. I'm sure he was okay. I'm sure he was fine. Yeah, he was I, fine. I they hope and about pray for health. Mike that he was good. You know? Yeah, I mean, Mike's getting better at this, I yeah, think. Yeah, and by the time he gets really good, he will run out of guests. So, you know, uh, what, what or no, by the time week? he runs, by the time he's good at this, people won't remember who David Letterman was. <laughs> you know? Well. That's bound oh. to happen eventually. I'm going to play the theme here. You can't hear it. Oh, we're done. Are you glad? I'm relieved. <laughs> Isn't he a good guest, Alan? Absolutely. He's I just... couldn't imagine spending 45 minutes with just you and me. 
he I'm made no it. Phil. Yeah. And nobody else called. Oh, thank God. <laughs> nobody else called. Yeah. So screw, yeah. screw all of them. We, yeah, really. We, we did it very nicely on our own. And by the way, we had some pretty good numbers of listeners listening to the program. So, you I don't know. Even pay attention to that anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's that's uh, the way it goes. Hey, listen, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, uh, Alan, our my only guest from California, and Don Thanks, Gillen, Tom. my only guest from New York, who, if he had had time, probably could have walked over here and just sat next to me. But I'd catch your COVID. But no, you won't, because you got the COVID <laughs> shot. I'll yeah, catch your is. COVID because I didn't get the COVID shot. Um, and, and and that's the end. The end. Anyway, thank you so much, Alan. And thank you so much, Don Giller. I appreciate it. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? And then I go to camera one. Here we are. Thank you. Uh, and that's it for our show tonight. Uh, thank you to all the people who didn't call because we would have had a worse show than we had uh, tonight with you. I, I don't know what happened here tonight, but I, this was fine. This was terrific. I'll see you all again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection, the Cabinet Live on Skype. I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, yeah, you know what to do. Tell her I love her. Okay. Good night, everybody.